Okay, so today I want to tackle the question of what makes a great man great? I think it's a question that a lot of young men ask themselves as they become older and they try to find what they believe in. I don't think I can give you what you should believe in or who you should become, but I can try to give you an ideal to which to strive for. The reason I think I can do so is because recently I've read The Rebel by Albert Camus, and I think he gives a great sense of clarity in this question by answering some of the tangential questions, such as, why is it important to stand for what you believe in? Why is it so important to speak your mind? And why should you cherish freedom? These are ultimately intertwined with the idea of the rebel. What I believe is the fundamental building block of human worth and moral code. As he puts it, the freedom he, the rebel, claims, he claims for all. The freedom he refuses, he forbids everyone to enjoy. When the rebel defines their own freedom, they create a standard that they believe everyone should live by. Where else can you find such standards? Yes, you can write them in a book, and yes, you could speak them. But until you truly live them out, I won't believe you. The reason I won't believe that these are true statements is because of the example of a Wall Street banker. I think we've all heard Wall Street bankers say that they are against federal payouts to poor people. And this may be because they believe that teaching someone how to fish is better than giving them fish. Or at least the saying goes. If someone said this as a Wall Street banker and never took a bailout and actually funded technical schools and ways that people could feasibly find education, then I would believe them. However, if there was a Wall Street banker that did take bailouts after su saying such things, I don't believe I could believe them. The credibility of this person would go down in my mind. I think there is something fundamentally worse. And this is the fact that their moral code in that moment was not worth following or at least what they profess to be their moral code. And because of such dubious actions, I cannot believe what they believe, for they have not lived it themselves. In such a way, their philosophy is not worth following because they have not followed it. So why should I? In a world of relative morals, living through them is of utmost importance because if you do not, these relative morals lose their ground. If the master is beaten by the rebel and the rebel kills the master, one may say that it was warranted. However, if the rebel makes the master his slave, then it is not a question of his morals for which he did it, but a question of power. These are fundamentally different questions. And because they are different questions, they do not answer my initial one, which is uh, what makes a great man great, not a powerful one. One can look at great people, such as George Washington, Mandela, Francois Dominique, who took the fight into their own hands and birthed new nations that strive to not shackle their citizens in the same ways that their old masters had. Or you can look to writers such as Voltaire, James Baldwin, or Mary Wollstonecraft, who are so eloquent in the way that they articulated their qualms with the status quo that people truthfully understood what was contradictory in their own philosophies. And in this way, these great people have this characteristic of living for what they believe in, articulating what they believe in to a new principle that can be followed, that is not contradictory, that is, in a way, pure. I've read their books, I've read their histories, and their movements and what they stood for, and understood the gnashing white teeth that opposed, the, uh, that opposed them. These trials and tribulations are nothing to scoff at. But like most people, if I'm completely honest with myself, I'm nothing like them. I don't have the same types of hardships facing me. I don't have the same masters over my head making me bow. 
I do not wish to drop my work as an engineer to start a revolution against my government. I do not wish to stop my life to entertain the thought of fighting oppression everywhere through the means of violence, such as being a rebel or a soldier. I don't really believe that my storytelling is good enough to articulate the oppression and prejudice or obstacles that face me. To be completely frank, I have two loving parents, a brother. My parents always put food on my table. They always put a roof over my head. They were always there to guide me. They were always able to become what I needed when I needed them most. I'm not a freedom fighter nor a writer, but I am an engineer who wants to express what he sees as his place in the world. Right now, I am not called to be a martyr and I don't believe I will be because my beliefs don't require such things. But I am, I am one who understands that he is able to reap the rewards of those who have lived before me, the shoulders I stand on. However, I don't believe that I cannot be a great man. Sure, I'm not going to have the recognition or the fame or the impact of the people I have listed. But that doesn't matter. That's not the point of the rebel. The point of the rebel is to have a moral code that they stand by. Although this moral code may move heaven and earth, or maybe it can be quiet and stand as the building block for someone else who I knew or who I know, to have the confidence to truly move heaven and earth for the better. That is what I believe a great man is, someone who can be the primary color of relative morals by truly believing, living out, and when being contradicted, face those facts and change. This is what I believe a great man is and what I strive to become. No matter what these morals are, I believe if you're able to truly do all these things, you will become a great man.